So the transfer window has ended and uh, after that marathon uh, streaming session yesterday, uh, we do bring in five new players. A couple have gone out the other way. So let's have a recap of the January transfer window at Newcastle United. Hi everybody, I'm Paul, back again, and yeah, just like I said in the intro there, just to recap the transfer window, was it a success, was it a failure, um, what do you think? Um, you know, the window started off with a lot of optimism, a lot of Newcastle United fans saying, oh, this is our new Christmas, this is um, going to be fantastic, we've never had this in 14 years, um, under Mike Ashley, we've never been involved in a transfer deadline day, so it was very optimistic. Deadline day started off very, very optimistic as well, with a lot of players being linked to coming to the club. Um, but if we look back very early doors, of course, we brought in Kieran Trippier uh, from Atletico Madrid, and that was a fantastic signing for me. Um, somebody who has been there, done it, uh, has worked his way up the ladder, played at international level, World Cup semi-final. Um, you know, he, he, this guy's got it all, and you can tell. He's, he's very classy on the pitch. Uh, he's very vocal, he gets in people's faces, which you've got to love, uh, and he's not frightened to put a tackle in. Brilliant at set pieces as well, which may come to a lot more fruition during the next few months. Now we've got some size and real height uh, to go for these uh, set pieces and corners. So for me, brilliant signing, absolutely brilliant, and uh, you know, really looking forward to Kieran Trippier becoming eventually Newcastle United captain, because that's what he is. There's no doubt in my mind he's captain. Um, and then... Uh, we bring in Chris Wood. Now, this is, uh, you know, a lot of controversy over this transfer because um, a lot of clubs have laughed at us uh, and said, oh, you know, let's have a good laugh at Newcastle, all this money, and we bring in Chris Wood. Um, yes, I've been very vocal in saying that uh, I think Chris Wood has yet to convince me, um, I have to say, but that's not to say that he won't. You know, further down the line, coming into this, the running for the season, we need him to be on top form. We need him to score some goals. Um, and I'm not saying he's not going to do that. Uh, what I'm saying is, I'm yet to be convinced. But that's not to say that he can't go and bag a hat-trick against Everton or um, score some goals for us in the running to keep us in the league. Uh, I do think Eddie Howe has a bit of a problem trying to work out his best position and trying how to get the, the, the best out of Chris Wood because that's not going to be easy. He doesn't really like playing on his own. He's not that type of striker. Uh, so we need to get more support around him and we certainly need to put more crosses into the box for him because it's just not going to happen uh, unless we provide him with the ammunition to score goals in the first place. Um, and then we come to deadline... Well, before, just before deadline day, of course, uh, Bruno Gamalish, um for me the signing of the window for us, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, brilliant midfielder. Um, he's been compared to Teote and Kabai all in one player, uh, which is fantastic for us. He can tackle, he can use the ball well, he can shoot, he can score goals. This guy's got it all. And a Brazilian international, uh, absolutely fantastic. And if he's playing alongside Joe Linton, that would be even more incredible because I think Joe Linton will learn so much from Bruno. Um, and it will bring um, uh, Joel Linton's game one. No end. So I'm really, really excited to see what this guy can do in the middle of the park for Newcastle. Uh, it gives us more options. Uh, it certainly gives us a bit, a, a bit of fire in that midfield that we've been missing. You know, a lot of teams have come through our midfield far too easy this season. And for me, the signing of Bruno will stop all that happening. So for me, brilliant signing, and without a doubt, Newcastle signing of the window. Um, just slightly above Trippier, I'd say, but Trippier is a brilliant signing as well. But this guy, Bruno, was wanted by some top, top teams, and he came to Newcastle. So we have to be thankful for that, but we also really want to see him hit the ground running straight away um, and, and help us escape the relegation. And then comes the deadline day, and my God, it was hectic in the very early doors. You know, we saw players being linked left, right and centre. Uh, Ekateke was the main man who was supposed to be, you know, fee agreed very early doors. 
Um, but unfortunately, at the end of the day, he didn't want to come to Newcastle. Uh, he didn't want to leave uh, Rhyme at the minute. He wants to stay there. Um, you know, he's only 19, the kid, and I can't really blame him. He didn't. He's, he's born and bred in Rhyme. He doesn't want to really leave there just yet. Um, but, you know, this guy is being touted as the next Mbappe, Thierry Henry. Uh, I don't really like saying things like that because, you know, each player has their own individual assets. Uh, so it was a shame that he didn't come, but he, he may well be a future signing for Newcastle United. Um, and it put the dampers on it a little bit because we really knew uh, that we, we wanted another striker in or somebody that could really uh, play up front and, and hit the back of the net. Uh, because, like I say, Chris Wood hasn't convinced everybody yet. Uh, and Callum Wilson's hopefully going to be back for the home game against Brighton, but we'll we'll have to see on that one. Uh, but then two defenders come in, uh, Matt Target and Dan Byrne. Now, Matt Target was Villa's player of the year last year. Uh, he's on loan till the end of the season uh, with an option to buy. And I think it's a wonderful signing because we've been crying out for a proper left back. We don't know if Dummett can stay fit. Jamal Lewis seems to have lost all confidence in his own ability. Um... Came back, looked very good. And if he gained that confidence back, but then, of course, the hamstring injury has knocked him back again. Uh, so Matt Target coming in, somebody that can bomb forward and he can cross a ball as well. So really looking forward to seeing what he can do uh, up and down the left-hand side in future games. And, of course, Dan Byrne, uh, very late confirmed. Many people thought, uh, you know, we were getting messages saying there was a problem with the medical, problem with paperwork. Uh, but then eventually around sort of 20 to 11, Newcastle released the uh, the video of Dan Byrne signing. Uh, absolutely fantastic for me because we need somebody who is big and strong, doesn't mind getting stuck in. I and mean, listen, the guy's six foot seven. He's going to be an asset at either end of the pitch. You know, corners and free kicks in our favour. He is going to be an asset. Defending, you know, he can clear the ball very well, very quickly, and he's he's very highly thought of, Dan Byrne. Um, so you know, some of the players that we brought in in that window are clearly just Premier League experience to get us out of the situation that we're in. Um, and Paul Merson yesterday just made a complete ass of himself, uh, saying that the you know the signings for Newcastle aren't Premier League proven and all of this. Well. Most of them are. So it just proves how behind the times that man is. And I don't think he knows what planet he's on half the time. Uh, really, really shocking from him yesterday. But hey-ho, I'm not going to bother with him. Uh, in all in all, I think, you know, we've done all right. We've done really well. Uh, because, you know, when was the last time we brought five players in during a transfer window? We've never known it. You know, top spenders across Europe was Newcastle United. That's going to grow in the summer as well. That's going to get even higher in the summer. You know, it's going to be a crazy transfer window, but we have to try and stay up. That's the important thing. We have to be in the Premier League next season. And if we're not, it's going to be a massive disappointment. Yes, we can bounce back. We've got the funds to bounce back. We've got the utilities to bounce back. But we don't want to be stuck in the championship for a year. You know, this process, we want to kickstart into action as quick as we possibly can. And I think with the players we've brought in, uh, you know, I'm quite confident now that we're going to stay up. I really am. I'm confident. I think a lot of the games may well be just 1-0 or 2-1. And, you know, if we can win a couple of games, they'll be scramble. You know, we'll, we'll be, they'll be horrible games to watch. But, we, you know, it's one of them where we need the points more than the performance. But what we do have in that team now is a lot of fight and a lot of passion. So, am I disappointed we didn't bring in another striker? Yes. Uh, I did think Lingard was coming. I, I really did. I, I got word of Lingard was coming. But, of course, Man United did what they did yesterday and even their own supporters were furious with what Man United did yesterday but that that's just the way they go on now we have, we have to ac accept that that's the way Man United want to play their games um you know let them get on with it as far as I'm concerned you know j just pathetic from them uh, I feel sorry for Jesse Lingard I really do uh, but like I say all in all I'm really pleased with the transfer window um disappointed not to bring in a striker but hey ho that's just the way it goes but I think we've got enough now. Um, and you have to be positive about the transfer window, given what we've been through in the last 14 years under Mike Ashley. So really, really pleased. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, was it a successful window for you? Um, were you happy with who we've brought in? And uh, how do you think we're going to do for the rest of the season? Uh, if you do enjoy the video as well, guys, please hit that like button. And also, if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. Very, very close to 9,000 now, which would be absolutely fantastic for the channel. And also, a big shout out to the channel sponsors, Jordy Riffs, um, guitar specialists based in the Northeast. They're offering 10% off your first guitar setup or 10% off your first guitar repair. 
and they're also offering a free guitar lesson. Your first one completely free. Uh, just quote the tune review to Graham and Natalie. Uh, their link to their website is down below in the description. And you can also find them on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.